broadcast media changing lives. Preserving audio and visual history. And Minister explains authorities stand down. This is National MTV News with Lorraine Gabina. Good evening and welcome to Thursday's news. The broadcast media industry is transforming lives daily and rapidly. What was new a decade ago is now considered archaic and outdated. The Pacific Island countries are no different, although a tad bit late when joining the shift from analog to digital media. Pacific Island participants at the Digital Broadcast Conference in Port Mosby were told there is an urgent need to develop the industry or be left behind as the rest of the world advances. Leanne Girari reports. It is increasingly recognized that broadcasting has an important role to play in development as a widespread tool of information transfer, as a method to improve governance, as an important economic sector in its own right, and as a potential access point to new information and communications technologies. There has been significant development through technological advances, the success of telecom liberalization and the central role of broadcasters in fostering creativity. It is incontestable that the past decade has seen quite a few developments in Papua New Guinea, according to ITU expert Dr. Andrew King. I think for each country, uh, really it's, it's a case of uh, the Pacific will get left behind in terms of actually being able to watch television, you know, if, the, if things don't, don't change soon. Um, so there's slightly different dynamics to the rest of the world, but still it's, a, it's now a case of technology has moved on and you won't be able to get the technology that you're currently using. So, <clears throat> pardon me, that's why it's uh, <clears throat> time, to, uh, time to, to do the tra transition and we'd really love to see uh, countries coming across the line and being able to change. And then the people will be able to watch you know, far better pictures, get improved quality uh, and uh, probably even more services as well. Leanne Girari, National MTV News. The importance of preservation of audio and visual material was emphasized at the Pacific Media Partnership Conference in Port Moresby. Broadcast media houses were told that they have an important role in safely keeping moving images and sound recordings for their historical, legal and cultural significance. Deli Waigeno with this report. The recommendation for the safeguarding and conservation of moving images was passed by the General Assembly of UNESCO in 1980. It was the first time that moving images or videos were declared as cultural heritage of each nation and the responsibility of governments to care for and preserve this cultural heritage. Atarina Samasoni Pele is from the UNESCO Cluster Office for the Pacific States based in Apia, Samoa. She said audio-video materials are important and need to be preserved in their original forms. These materials in which um, are basically the content of media work, um, for example, news items, um, documentaries, um, radio programs, all of those um, um, contents of media contents, these are the, the, the materials that we need to safeguard uh, for future use. Audiovisual information possess unique dimensions that written word cannot replace. Written word cannot show gestures, personality traits, or tone of voice. Despite the importance, there are challenges in safeguarding audiovisual information in videotapes and reels on the back of advancing digital technology. The whole concept of audiovisual archiving from the perspective of UNESCO is something that needs to be promoted and to the extent that um, governments and organizations become committed to set up a specific audiovisual archiving. One area of challenge is having the facilities and expertise to move very large audiovisual collections to digital formats to rescue them from becoming inaccessible. Investment from governments and stakeholders in this area is vital. UNESCO says it is providing support to those who wish to collaborate to ensure that even the content and end products of broadcasting is safeguarded. 
In a country like PNG, where majority of the population is in the rural areas and oral history is the norm, the use of audiovisual material in capturing as well as preserving our cultural heritage is of great value. Deli Waigeno, National, MTV News. Costs and regulations are often isolated in remote regions, making media broadcasting in the Pacific an almost impossible task. Participants in the industry discussed the unavo unavoidable challenges as well as finding solutions. Broadcasters around the Pacific face significant challenges when broadcasting through their respective, often remote regions. These include high cost of transitioning from analog to digital, a fit that is often elusive to island nations due to ICT services being so pricey. Expert Dr. Andrew King from the International Telecommunications Union spoke this morning to media stakeholders who attended the Pacific Media Partnership Conference about said challenge and urged them to invest in the transition or be left behind as the rest of the world advances. Really the main challenge for every one of you unfortunately is cost. Um, that if, if we can overcome the cost hurdle, uh, I think it'd be, be quite easy. Um, the other challenge uh, really in a couple of the countries um, is a fear between free to air, the traditional free to air broadcasters and the impact of the pay television groups that have uh, commenced uh, in those areas and how they might work together and one taking the other's place and whatever in the future. But there is a place for both, um, but it's just got to be worked out and that's where I guess the regulator comes in in each country to make sure that things are fair and reasonable. ITU expert Dr. King, while discussing the challenges Pacific broadcasters face, said that broadcasters can future-proof the industry to ensure that they remain relevant, needed, and well-utilized by audiences, whether they be viewers, listeners, online users, or social networkers, whether they live in great modern metropolitan centers of the Asia-Pacific with information and communication ever-present at their fingertips, or in rural areas where analog radios and communal TV still provide their main window on the wider world. Leanne Girari, National MTV News. The day's other stories when we come back, including the suspension of the Mount Hagen Health Authority Board. Welcome back to National MTV News. The Western Highlands Provincial Health Authority Board has been suspended indefinitely by Health Minister Michael Malabag and a new caretaker board has been appointed. The caretaker administrative board will take charge of all health matters in the province while the inquiry is completed. This follows the ongoing strike by the health workers of Mount Hagen General Hospital. Remember for day. The Health Minister Michael Malabag made this announcement today in Parliament after a question without notice was asked by Day MP Wesley Nukunj. How far has the Minister gone into addressing the issue? Because you can't continue to uh, prolong the issue at the expense of the people who are actually dying each day. How long has it, uh, how far has the Minister gone to addressing this issue? And two, can the minister intervene so that the projects in the district continue to progress? The minister responded that the strike by the health workers is complex and ongoing and the only option to take was to suspend the board as was demanded by the health workers. Union leaders were brought into Port Mosby from Mount Hagen and we met with them and through the intervention of the prime minister. Now the understanding was things will be on hold until I get the final, the final report. Then we will come up with the appropriate uh, uh, decisions that, we, that I will do. But the staff, only staff yet now, they are strike. Now this is creating a very big complication for patients. You know, it, patients' lives you cannot play around with. This week's strike was the third time that health workers at Mount Hagen General Hospital walked off their jobs, expressing their frustration on certain issues that have not been addressed by the board. Minister Malabak said investigations into the board are underway and will be completed soon. And based on those findings 
And after consultation with the senior, senior management of the health department, including the secretary, we decided that there need to be more in-depth follow-up specialized uh, investigation that will require Department of Works, Department of Finance, the Auditor General, and of course, uh, Department of Personal Management, especially on hum human resource affairs. The minister has instructed the health secretary, Pasco Kase, to impose disciplinary actions on the two union doctors involved in the strike. Basenata Yama, National MTV News. The trial for the acting governor's seat of Hela province began today at the Waigani National Court. Korobale Kopiago MP Philip Undialu and Komo Magarima MP Francis Potape are in dispute over the seat following the death of the late governor Anderson Agiru. Two weeks ago, Potape filed an interim injunction challenging Undialu's appointment, but Justice Colin McKyle refused to deal with it. Today at the trial, Potape argued that procedures were not followed and Undialu was voted in by the Provincial Assembly as acting governor. The court will determine the acting governor of Hela province at the end of the trial. The investigation into the Hanwa Bada shooting on January 23, 2015 is nearing completion. The alleged police shooting claimed the lives of two men from Hanwa Bada in Central Province. Crimes Commissioner Victor Isove said a police officer has already been identified and arrest will, arrest will be made soon after completion of the investigation. The investigation into the HB shooting has been described as a dull and long-running criminal investigation. It took police 20 months to almost complete the investigation. Crimes Commissioner Victor Isove today confirmed that the only thing left is the matching between the bullet that was taken out of the victim's body and the bullet casings retrieved from the crime scene. Once forensic tests are completed, the police officer suspected of discharging the firearm will be arrested. The Assistant Commissioner of Police, Iso Uwe, said police investigations take longer to complete because witness statements and forensic examinations need to be compiled accurately to make the case successful in court. Meanwhile, in a similar matter, five suspects who are also police officers implicated in the Tatana shooting last year have been arrested and charged. A sixth is soon to be arrested and charged as well. Isouve said budget constraint has always been an issue that left police with unfinished investigations and court cases. Basenata Yama, National MTV News. The Export Control Office of the Coffee Industry Corporation in Ley is calling on the national government to help upgrade the building. Since its establishment in 1989, the CIC building has not been given any major upgrade. The management has constructed a three-story building plan, however needs funding to be implemented. This quality control building of the Coffee Industry Corporation in Ley came into operation in 1989. The office serves as the operation division in Morobe. Marie Kiliawi, the senior export control officer, said the management has constructed a new three-story plan to upgrade the building, but is on hold due to funding. The groundwork has been done. We, we're just looking around to source for help to build up the place. The coffee industry in PNG has been consistent in exporting one million bags of coffee every year. The office's main role is to protect the consistency with exports and to keep its buyers. The industry last year made a shipment of more than 700,000 bags of coffee to importers overseas with a total revenue of 400 million kina for the country and a total export levy of 4 million kina. PNG is currently exporting to over 33 countries. Its major buyers are countries in Europe, with Germany as the biggest coffee buyer. Others include America, Australia and Japan. All facilities belong in, you must meet him the current world stage along all commodity trading. Now you may accommodate him all along here. Me no can kiss him all buyers overseas come and me same long. Head of his blooming coffee and me no come up with standard blooming. 
the Coffee Industry Corporation Office of Quality and Control made a call to the national government to help source funds in order to implement the CIC management plan to upgrade the office. Julie Badui Owa, National MTV News, Lay. MTV's primetime business program, Business PNG, is teaming up with popular online business magazine, Business Advantage PNG, for a brand new feature called Business Advantage Boardroom. The feature will initially air quarterly on Business PNG, with the first episode airing next Tuesday at 8 p.m. For over a decade, Business Advantage PNG has been reporting on business in Papua New Guinea and in turn has become a respected commentator on the country's various industries. Now the publication is teaming up with MTV's Business PNG program for a quarterly feature that will see publishing director Andrew Wilkins host panel discussions with industry leaders from different sectors about current affairs and issues and challenges they face. What we wanted to do with this program is really give an opportunity for people who are interested in business in PNG, and there are lots of them, um, an understanding of some of the challenges and the issues. And sometimes the best way of dealing with challenges and issues is to get a bunch of smart guys in a, or girls in a room and nut out the issues with them and actually discuss them. So that's really the premise is to have a dis panel discussion where um, I'm starting off the discussion by throwing questions at the panel, but then they're actually talking and discussing and debating some of the issues that they're facing with business. Um, and it's a slightly different kind of program to what PNG viewers may be used to, um, but I think what it does, it gives a chance to actually understand some of the issues that maybe otherwise are quite hard to understand. MTV will co-produce the feature in partnership with Business Advantage International, publishers of online magazine Business Advantage PNG. Leanne Gerari, National MTV News. And now looking at our finance news, the Kina closed unchanged at 0.3155 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina was buying 0.3080 US dollars, 0.4014 Australian dollars, 0.2704 Euro and 30.55 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold, coffee, cocoa and copra closed the day lower. Copper closed lower, while palm oil and crude oil closed the day higher. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed at 65.82 points lower, the ASX is trading at 18.98 points lower, and the All Ordinaries is trading at 21.47 points lower. When we come back after the break, we'll have stories from earthquake in Italy and a supplementary budget passed in Parliament. Welcome back. A supplementary budget of 928 million kina was passed on voices this afternoon in Parliament. Treasury Minister Patrick Pruaj announced that to cater for the supplementary budget, over 649 million kina was retained from various capital investments, while over 279 million kina was cut from unissued operational appropriation from various government agencies. The minister said the first six months of the year has been tough for many economies and the country has been no different. He highlighted the global drop in commodity prices was a huge factor in the passing of the supplementary budget. He said the government must remain cautious as the pace of recovery in the global economy remains slow and steady. Parliament was then adjourned to the 25th of October. The death toll has climbed significantly in the deadly earthquake in Italy. It started at 159 people and within the last couple of hours it is now at 247 rather. It has left towns demolished as rescuers frantically search for survivors. The earthquake struck while people were sleeping. The deadly 6.2 magnitude quake struck in the middle of the night. The small town of Amatrice, around 90 miles northeast of Rome, near the epicenter, devastated. 
Amid the rubble, the town's clock tower still standing. Frozen in time, 3.37 a.m., the moment the quake hit. Amatricha's mayor telling CNN, quote, the town is no more. It was very scary. There was a huge tremor. Everything was moving and we were not able to get up. There was no light, nothing. No one to rescue us. No one came to our rescue. Most of the three-story buildings in the picturesque little villages pancaked, buried under tons of concrete, a survivor. Are you able to breathe, the rescue worker asks. The desperate answer, only a bit. CNN's Barbie NATO was broadcasting live from nearby Saleto with rescue workers on the roof of a damaged home. Suddenly, there's a roar. Fortunately, no one appeared to be injured as the home next door collapsed. Residents, some still in their pajamas, dug with their bare hands to find survivors. The arrival of heavy lifting equipment delayed by narrow mountainous roads blocked by debris. Farm machinery was pressed into duty. Amatrice was preparing for its annual food festival. The town's population swelled by tourists. The house was trembling, shaking. It got more and more intense. It's absolutely appalling noise, clinking, thundering sort of rumble. It felt like someone had put a bulldozer out of the house just trying to knock it down. The death toll continued to rise throughout the day. Here, a lone dog searches through the wreckage of the homes in the nearby town of Arquata del Trotto. All the houses are just gone. There's no, no, no houses anymore. We have a big lineup in True Guys Sports, Rugby League, Volleyball and Athletics. Stay tuned. Two Kai Sports. Welcome to True Kai Sports. Voting on this year's Forex People's Choice Award is officially open for fans of the Interest Super Cup. The SPP and G Hunters have nominated Justin Olam for the Forex People's Choice Award for this year. Olam's freakish try-scoring ability and lightning speed has seen him sign for the Melbourne Storm in 2017. The 14 clubs have each nominated a key player from the 2016 squad, with the focus now shifting to the competition's passionate fans to select their favourite. The player with the most votes will be announced as the Forex People's Choice recipient at the annual QRL Awards Dinner on August 31st at the Royal International Convention Centre in Brisbane. Hunters players have won the award for the past two years since their inclusion in the ISC. Wartovo Puara Jr. received a lot of support to win last year's award. In 2014, Willy Minoga won the same award in the Hunters' first year in the Interest Super Cup competition. To vote for Justin Olam or any of the nominees, you can visit the Queensland Rugby League website. Multiple entries submitted by the same person will not be accepted and a valid email address is required in order to vote. Voting closes this Sunday at 8 p.m. Elijah Lavette, National MTV Sports. The 2016 National Confederate Rugby League Championships are set for next week. The championships will be held from Wednesday, August 31st to Saturday, September 3rd, 2016 at the Ley Rugby League Ground and the Sir Ignatius Kilagas Stadium. For Confederates, Southern, Highlands, Islands and Northern will have teams in the schoolboys under 16, under 18, under 20, women's and seniors. The women's and under 20s will play on Thursday, September 1st. The men's competition kicks off on Friday and runs over two days. Reigning Confederate champions Northern take on Southern in the second game on Friday at the Ley Rugby League grounds. The men's competition ends on Saturday with the finals and official closing of the national championships with the announcement of the respective national championships representative teams for the under-16, under-18, under-20 women's and senior men's teams. The selected teams will participate during the Prime Minister's 13 weekend when the Australians PM's 13 will play PNG PM's 13 scheduled for the 24th of September in Port Moresby. The national championships has a rich history of identifying and developing high quality rugby league talents that have succeeded in the likes of Kato Tio, Brandy Peter, 
ga hune Silas, Ishmael Balkawa, Philemon Kimisive, Warren Glare, Nixon Borana, Edward Goma, and many others who have continued on, who have continued on and are currently playing for their local Intercity Cup franchises. Elijah Lavet, National and TV Sports. This weekend, the Fairfax Volleyball Association will go into their first week of finals for their 2016 season. The finals will see the best of the teams compete for the top spot to be named premiers. Following weeks of intense competition, competing clubs in the Fairfax Volleyball Association have just completed regular season rounds and will now begin finals. Clubs to look out for in the finals of competition in the men's division will be consistent performers Raukele, who have proven all season that they are one of the best in the competition. But other clubs such as Patriots, University and Freeway Hawks have been known to be a force to be reckoned with in previous seasons. While clubs prepare for the finals, selected players from the association have undergone vigorous training in preparation for the 2016 National Championship, which is scheduled for next month. In the lead-up to the championships, selected teams have been trimmed down to final numbers as they zero in on the competition. Other volleyball associations throughout the city are also in full swing preparing for the national championships. NCD Volleyball Association are currently focusing on the coming championship and have always been a threat to other centers when they step onto the courts. Dion Kombang, National MTV Sports. Selection trials for Team Central's athletics team took place last week at the Sir John Guy Stadium where athletes around the city attended. Selections were based on qualifying time for both the men's and women's. Godwin Eki reports. Team Central athletes took part in the selection trials for athletics last week. Both men and women took part in the semi-finals and finals of 100 meter hurdles, 1500 meters, 200 meter, 400 meter and relay. Organizer Mane Francis said athletes who attended the selection trials came from within the city, nearby villages and villages outside of Port Moresby, including Sogeri, Gaire, Tubiseria and others. Athletes that qualified during the trials were assessed based on qualifying times in their individual category. Francis said athletes already selected to make the athletics team other sporting codes that Team Central will be sending to Kimbe for the BSP PNG Games are yet to make confirmations. Central Provincial Sports Coordinator Henry Cavana from the Office of the Governor has called on Team Central Management to be fair on selecting athletes for netball, volleyball, rugby nines with soccer team yet to be announced so that the best athletes can represent Central Province during the PNG Games. Godwineki. National MTV Sports. More to come in Trukai Sports after the break. Cricket, weightlifting and football. Trukai Sports. Welcome back to cricket. This weekend we'll see semi-finals for the A Reserve and Premier Division. The games are expected to be tough as Barramundi players stand down from local competition a week before their tour to Australia. Most of the Barramundis are attached to teams competing in the finals. Home Cricket Association Vice President Charles Amini said despite no 2015 competition due to the Pacific Games, this year's three months of competition has played out well for both the players and the Palm Cricket Board. After the reduction of three turfs to one at Amini Park, Palm Cricket carried out matches in the nearby villages such as Stubuseria and Vabukori. None of them ever played in the Port Moshu Comp, so it was good to see them uh, come in. So th that's what I was saying. Even though we lost the ovals in Port Moresby, it opened up opportunities outside for those villages outside to join. And we've got interest so far from uh, Porabana, from Boira. Meanwhile, this weekend's clash between Dulux United and Pure Water Raukele, as well as Swaya Shipping Hoods and IBS Poraparna, 40A reserves are expected to be interesting as the players will have to step up the game now that elite players, the Baramandis, have been laid off from competition. <laughs> The women's will have Dulux United face Swire Shipping Hoods while PMMI Coasters take on IBS Logo Who. If you start with Premier Grade, um, Dulux United lost only one game this season. So they've been completely dominant 
this year. The defending champions are Pure Water Raukele, who ended up fifth this season. They got into the finals, final five. So um, they have a chance to defend themselves. But you would say on the form of this season, Deluxe United will be favourites. Winners from these matches will face off in the grand final coming up after a week of the Legends Big Bash. Dini Rose Raiko, National MTV Sports. Hanwabada Weightlifting Club in the central province is now able to revive its services in the community after being dormant for months. The association is now able to do this thanks to Minister for Health Michael Malabag, who sponsored the club with 100,000 kina. Club coach Douglas Mayer said the funding will go a long way to putting back together the club so that operations can resume. Hanwabada Weightlifting Club received 100,000 kina from Health Minister Michael Malabag to revive the club for the athletes in Hanwabada and to raise the profile of the code in the community. Coach Douglas Mayer said the funding will go a long way and will be put to good use and also help build a rundown facility that once helped make big names such as Dika Toa and Stephen Curry so that young athletes can be trained to be like Dika and Stephen in the future. Donation is to improve the club, improve the place, you know, like we have no walls in the gym, uh, the con concrete's broken. We'll try to patch up all these areas and then hopefully some people will see what we've been doing these past uh, years. He added he is hoping to rebuild the club so that young weightlifters who enjoy the code can come back to start training. When you miss training for six months and more, it's very hard to get back into training. When you, when you start training, then your body is really sore and then you have to recover for two, three days and then do another session again. And then I think it would be a month until your body starts uh, taking the, the pain of train, getting back into training. He says the club is committed to producing champions who will one day represent PNG at both regionally and internationally. Godwineki, National MTV Sports. The official draw for the new expanded OFC Champions League 2017 has revealed the makeup of the four groups for next year's edition of Oceania's premier international club competition. Both Hekari United and Lay City Dwellers will again take part in next year's OFC Champions League. Taking the top position in Group A is New Caledonia champion AS Magenta, who was semi-finalist in 2016 OFC Champions League, held at QB Stadium in Auckland, New Zealand. Predictable pattern, which was Auckland City having all the possession, but uh, this is one of their better opportunities. Joining them in Group A are Papua New Guinea's Hekari United, who still hold the title of the only club outside of New Zealand or Australia to win the regional title and appear at the FIFA Club World Cup. AS Central Sport of Tahiti and the runners-up from the qualifying stage of the OFC Champions League, which will be held in early 2017. The pedigree of some of these players, Colin Marshall, most recently. The makeup of Group B includes two-time OFC Champions League runner-up, Team Wellington, the current New Zealand champions, the winner of the Fiji League, Sport runner-up in New Caledonia Super League, and the winner from the qualifying stage of the OFC Champions League. New Zealand have won on penalties. Marco Rojas confirms their place. In Group C, the defending and seven-time champions, Auckland City FC, have drawn the winners of Vanuatu Club competition, Papua New Guinea's Lay City Dwellers and Solomon Islands runner-up. Only one team in Group D has already been identified, and that is the 2011-2012 OFC Champions League finalist and the 2016 semi-finalist A.S. Stefana of Tahiti. They will be joined by Solomon Islands winning club and the runners-up from Fiji and Vanuatu. Shane Saroya, National MTV Sports. 
And on a lighter note, it is not all artifacts and history for the staff of the National Museum and Arts Gallery. Today was sports day as the scientists and the corporate staff battled it out on the volleyball court as part of the management's effort to keep the staff fit and healthy. This game follows a medical checkup on the staff which showed that some needed further attention. This is an annual event that the museum hopes will encourage other government agencies to take part as well. Taking uh, people out to the field, it helps encourage unity and teamwork among the staff because you relate well on the court and it helps you to relate well within your workstation and your colleague as well. It also helps to build teamwork and professionalism. That ends Chukai Sports. The weather details when we come back. Chukai Sports. True Kai Sports. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. Weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region: thundery showers inland in Port Moresby. Evening brief showers in Daru, Kerima and Alotau and evening thundery showers for Popandeta. In the Momase region, evening shower or two in Leh and evening brief showers in Medang, Wewek and Vanimo. In the New Guinea Island, showers for Lorengau, thundery showers and rain in Kaviang. Evening brief showers for Kokopo, Rabaul and Kimbe and some showers in Buka. And in the Highlands region, all centers, evening brief showers, then morning fog. Forecasts for small ships for the next 24 hours. Waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait and Daru to Kiwai Island to Kerima to Yule Island to Hood Point to Samurai Island with waters of eastern and western Milan Bay Islands with waters of Samurai Island to Cape Vogel to Finchafen with waters of Finchafen through Vitia Strait, CSC Islands to Long Island with waters of Manus and its western group of islands and with waters of New Island to New Britain to Bougainville seas 0.5 to 1.3 meters. With waters west of Long Island to Medang to Bogia to we Forecast for small ships for the next 24 hours. Waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait and Daru Island. Daru to Kiwai Island to Kerma to Yule Island to Hood Point to Samurai Island with waters of eastern and western Million Bay Islands with waters of Samurai Island to Cape Vogel to Finchafen with waters of Finchafen through Vitia Strait, CSC Islands to Long Island with waters of Manus and its western group of islands and with waters of New Island to New Britain to Bougainville, seas 0.5 to 1.5 meters. Ocean forecast for PNG areas in the Coral Sea, seas light to northeast to southeast winds at 10 to 15 knots. In the Solomon Seas, seas light with northeast to southeast winds at 10 to 15 knots. And in the Bismarck Sea, seas slight to moderate with east to southeast winds at 10 to 20 knots. In the Pacific Ocean, seas slight with northeasterly winds at 10 to 15 knots. Weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield with doing with Dulux. 
Now recapping our main stories for tonight, broadcast media changing lives, preserving audio and visual history, and Minister explains authority stand down. And that's the news, sports and weather for tonight. On behalf of the entire news team, I'm Lorraine Gabina. Pleasant viewing. Good night.